last video, I drew Circe clothing with a bit more detail than usual, and I had fun designing their coats especially. So let's make one. All you'll need is wool, soap, water, salt, thread, a bunch of leaves, and magic. Well, first let's be clear on what we're making. A traditional Circe outfit has two layers. Closest to the body are clothes made of skin, fur, and leather that vary a lot depending on the season, the region, what materials are available, and what you're planning to do in it. But that layer is rarely visible. Over that, people wear a coat. It helps with trapping air for insulation and keeping out the weather. And most importantly, it's pretty. Making a coat starts in late spring, when people have returned to their summer villages and the Melfa are shedding their winter coats. It's usually men who brush out the wool and women who make it into fabric. When I first came up with the Circe, I thought they'd use woven fabrics, but I think felt makes more sense now. To colour the coat, you'll need some dye. The traditional colour for a Circe coat is indigo, made by crushing leaves that contain the compound indican. But plants with that compound are pretty rare, and they can't grow anywhere except the very warmest edges of the island. In other societies, that might make indigo a status symbol, since rare dyes are usually the most valuable. Often in real life, there have been laws restricting certain dyes and fabrics to certain classes of person. In Imperial Rome, only political officials could wear Tyrian purple, and in medieval England there were specific furs and fabrics appropriate to different ranks of noble. These laws are sometimes to do with controlling the economy, but more often it's about making hierarchical boundaries visible, or making sure the common people are acting appropriately, by which I mean in ways the elite approve of. The Circe have heard of things like that, but they find it pretty silly. Even if someone did try to use indigo to show off their wealth, it wouldn't work very well, because thanks to magic, everyone can wear indigo. And they're proud of that, so indigo has become a sign of Circe identity. All you need to do is gather leaves. Any plant will do. Throw the leaves into a mixture of water and salt. Turn them into indigo leaves by singing about how you're crushing indigo leaves right now, and crash them between your fingers to the rhythm of the song. Once you've released enough pigment into the water, you can just get rid of the leaves. Now it's time for some dyeing. You can dye the wool before making it into felt if you want. Then you can arrange different colours of wool into patterns. When the fabric is felted, the fibres fuzz into each other, creating a mottled design, known as cloud pattern. Another common design is a gradient pattern, with the sleeves and hems being the darkest. More common, though, is making patterns with resist dyeing. This is pretty heavily inspired by the Japanese technique of shibori, where a pattern is created by squeezing, pressing or gathering the fabric so that the dye can't get to all of it. In Japan, it's done on woven materials, which are a lot more flexible than felt and less absorbent. So in Circe dyeing, the patterns tend to be a lot larger and the edges a lot less sharp. The results of resist dyeing can be kind of unpredictable with varying intensities of colour which the Circe think is pretty. If you sew a simple running stitch, then gather it before dyeing the fabric, it creates a line with asymmetric white patches on either side. This pattern is called footsteps. You can fold the fabric first, then sew through all the layers to create a repeated pattern, but that means you only get one side of the line, so it's called hopping footsteps. These can create larger patterns, like circles, diamonds, and bird wings. Bites are a common design element, made by sewing beads near the edge of folds. When you unfold the dyed fabric, a mark is left either side, like a bite mark. Another design using beads is called garaika, because it looks like the fur of this animal, a garaika. The fabric is gathered around a bead and tied beneath it, leaving white circles on the fabric. Another common pattern is flowers or snowflakes. To create this pattern, you gather fabric to a point, or fold it radially. When unfolded, it resembles a blooming flower. Large flower patterns over the top of the body are especially popular with men, because of the way they're framed by a man's sash. Then there are sea ice patterns, created by folding the felt into triangles or squares, then compressing it from both sides. When unfolded, there's a grid that resembles ice on water, hence the name. This pattern is hard to make over a large area, so sometimes it's made in separate pieces and then sewn together. Actually, that's pretty common in general. Often the coat is divided into different fields, 
above the belt, below the belt, and sleeves, and each will be decorated differently. And additional decoration is often added over the life of a coat. They might be decorated with different coloured felt, beads, feathers, furs, or embroidery. Traditionally, these extra decorations should be gifts. People will often keep one coat just dyed and add decoration to another. Lastly, there's the belt and sash. The combination is called a tether. The same word is used for a rope that keeps a boat or animal from wandering off. They can be made of any material, though dyed felt is popular. They're often used to hold things and to keep air trapped inside the coat. But another important role is displaying social identity. Children wear only a thick belt. If you wear the sash hanging down vertically from your shoulders, you're a man. If you wear it crossed diagonally, you're a woman. If you're single and looking for a partner, you wear the belt fastened at the front. If you're taken, you fasten it at the back, or rather your partner does. Usually it's tied simply so that it doesn't get in the way. But for special occasions, a long belt can be worn and tied in various fancy ways. Intentionally tying a belt badly and asking someone to fix it is a popular way to flirt. Now, this is only the most traditional form of Xerxes clothing. There are plenty of variations out there. But there is one rule. You shouldn't wear red fabric. In this world, magic has bad eyesight, which is why you can convince the world that your leaves are indigo. If you wear red, it might think you're bleeding out. 